The federal government will beef up our defence forces with $330 billion over the next decades. New drones, ships, air defence systems and a local weapons industry to produce homemade missiles. In today's episode, why the government is planning to recruit Kiwis and Pacific Islanders to fight for Australia and why some critics say this all still leaves Australia vulnerable. is threatened by enemies often unrelenting. Get these people out of here. The world's most famous fighting force is the US Marines, the highly trained elite warriors whose history goes back to the American Revolutionary War. The Marines are amphibious, that is, they're soldiers, but they're embedded within the US Navy, deploying infantry and artillery troops and aircraft from warships and aircraft carriers. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant, Marines. Most famously in World War II, where they launched a ferocious amphibious assault on Japanese forces across the Pacific Islands. If you've seen the famous footage of American forces raising the tattered Stars and Stripes flag on the island of Iwo Jima, those were Marines. The Marines claimed the entire island on March 26, 1945, but the capture came with a morbid price. Nearly 7,000 Marines were killed in action. And this is the model for the new look Australian Army an amphibious fighting force inspired by the Marines with a $44 billion spending boost. That'll buy things like landing craft that can deliver soldiers to a beach, Apache Guardian attack helicopters and Blackhawks. There'll be a big investment in beefing up the northern defence bases too. It's part of a giant new spend, an extra $5.7 billion over the next four years and an extra $50.3 billion over the decade, bringing the total spend to $330 billion. That makes defence funding the equivalent of 2.4% of Australia's gross domestic product by 2034, up from where it's been below 2%. We're axing several projects like new F-35 Joint Strike fighter jets worth $72 billion. And we're buying or making nuclear submarines, powerful guided missiles, new ships, drones, and a giant robot stealth submarine called a Ghost Shark. Here's Defence Minister Richard Miles announcing the new program at the National Press Club on Wednesday. Miles articulated two big ideas. The first is impactful projection. That means the ability to strike adversaries at long range, like with long range missiles, nuclear submarines, and cyber warfare capabilities. The other idea is denial, preventing enemies from striking us. The optimistic assumptions that guided defence planning after the end of the Cold War are long gone. Our environment is characterised by the uncertainty and tensions of entrenched and increasing strategic competition between the United States and China. Large-scale war has returned to the European continent and conflict is once again gripping the Middle East. It's a philosophical change from when Australia's military goal was to assume we'd get a decade's notice before any attack and that our forces could spend their time participating in multinational forces in places like Afghanistan and peacekeeping missions closer to home. Marl says that has to change because things are getting more scary out there as China gets more aggressive in our own region. Australia no longer has the luxury of a 10-year window of strategic warning time for conflict. In the Middle East, Iranian-backed Houthi rebels are attacking ships bringing goods to and from Australia with drones and helicopters in the Red Sea something that has dramatically slowed down the shipping of everything from fuel oil to food. And China is increasingly aggressive in the South China Sea, threatening any warship or aircraft that dares to enter 
what it considers its territory. Richard Miles says the threat to those sea lanes, both near and far, is Australia's greatest problem, much greater than anyone trying to invade Australia itself. An invasion of Australia is an unlikely prospect in any scenario, precisely because so much damage can be done to our country by an adversary without ever having to step foot on Australian soil. Ben Packham is the Australian's foreign affairs and defence correspondent. So, Ben, what's different about the defence force Richard Miles is creating? The new defence strategy makes the point that in the last 12 months, the strategic circumstances have worsened and that China's behaviour is becoming increasingly coercive, especially in the South China Sea. Basically, the big expense going forward is the Navy, up to $76 billion over the decade on nuclear submarines and up to $69 billion on surface ships. There's also new money for missiles, drones. There's money to improve the Army's ability to conduct amphibious operations. Bringing the Defence Force and the Defence Force's sort of forward planning up to speed with the current threat environment and cutting off a whole lot of things which weren't relevant anymore. Then recruitment is one of the big problems this strategy has to fix. We have a shortfall of 4,500 personnel. The government says it's considering recruiting New Zealanders and even people from the Pacific. Would that mean offering these people citizenship to fight for us? I think it would be as part of a pathway to citizenship. This is something that's been sort of thrown around for the last couple of years because basically Australians don't want to join the Defence Force in big enough numbers. And Richard Miles points out the Gurkhas have a long and impressive history serving for the British Armed Forces. But this is something that could work really well. I'm not sure whether you're going to get a whole lot more Kiwis coming into the Defence Force because they can live in Australia anyway. But I think it could be potentially quite an attractive proposition for many Pacific Islanders. Should make the Defence Force football teams more impressive as well, I'd say. <laughs> Look, it certainly would. It certainly would. Coming up, there's a global missile shortage and our solution is to make them here. But how? Our subscribers get deep analysis of defence policy and all the big scoops. Join us by subscribing at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. In recent days, Russian forces completely destroyed a huge thermal coal-fired power plant in Ukraine. Aftermath of the attack, flames engulfing the Soviet era power plant and thick plume of black smoke blowing into the sky. President Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukraine didn't have enough missiles to shoot the Russian attack out of the sky. The Tropilska power plant, electricity in the Kyiv region, depends on it. Eleven missiles were headed towards it. The first seven we took down. Four destroyed Tropilska. Why? Because we had zero missiles. We ran out of all missiles. Ukraine is begging its allies for more. But missiles are in short supply and high demand around the world. The US Navy recently said it fired more than 80 Tomahawk cruise missiles in just one day against those Houthi rebels attacking shipping in the Red Sea. That's why Australia's going to make our own, with a $21 billion spend over the next decade. Australia has for a long time been pretty terrible at acquiring the best defence gear quickly. We generally buy overseas-made ships and aircraft, and then we ask for all sorts of modifications, which slows down the delivery. Miles, of course, blames former governments for all that and says the new strategy is either building things here or buying them off the shelf with no extra tweaks. He calls it minimum, minimum viable, viable capability. capability. You know, too often what we've seen in the past is procurements where people seek to have all the bells and whistles put on top, and that is a recipe for ensuring that we go beyond budget and beyond time and we don't have a capability at all. Some critics say we're just not spending enough that we need to prepare for a direct attack on Australia by China, or at the very least, to be ready for China to attack Taiwan 
in a way that draws Australia in to a very hot conflict. Richard Miles is scathing about this. You know, those commentators who suggest that we're going to be playing some big part in the worst contingency that may or may not occur in the next few years, it lacks wit. Like, it genuinely lacks wit. There's no analysis in that. Because we will never be a peer to the United States or China. Right? That's not what we're trying to do. But in a much less certain world in the future, which is possible, we need to make sure that we have transformational capability in place so we can resist coercion and maintain our way of life. That is the strategic cat that we are trying to skin. Thanks for joining us on The Front. We'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, get all the nation's best journalism anytime by subscribing at theaustralian.com.au.